All right. So welcome everybody to the Apex Sniper Bootcamp Tutorials. Uh, my name is John Skelton. I'm head of operations with Apex Investing. And before we get started, as always, got to put up our disclosures here, making sure you understand that uh, trading has risk and you understand those risks and know what it is you're doing before you do it. What is the Bootcamp Tutorial Series? Well, we have a lot of new members that have been joining us for our free trial bootcamp for the sniper trading system. Some of you have been with us just a couple of days. Some of you have been with us a few weeks. These webinars, these tutorial series are not necessarily designed for veterans that have been around with us forever, okay? But anyone is welcome to join, but these are gonna be more of a basic and elementary thing just to help make boot camp less overwhelming and a little less confusing. So I will be approaching everything we do in these tutorials uh, as if you're more of a brand new trader, okay? It's always good to go back and review the basics. <clears throat> so please help us out here. We've got 100 and something people on this tutorial today. Uh, I'm gonna cover a little something different today, okay? We're not necessarily gonna be digging into charts and specific trade setups. We've done some of that. We're gonna talk about how to put it all together. So please follow along. Please help us stay focused. Uh, please keep any questions related to the subject we're covering right at that time, okay? We're not, uh, you know, this isn't a trade by trade webinar. We're not talking about Markers Plus and Lilu and so on. So please help us stay focused. We've got a lot to cover and I know it's a Friday afternoon and you guys are ready to uh, start your weekend. So if you've missed any of the other uh, webinars here that we have, um, <clears throat> Let's see here, Jack, I just got a message from you. Um, okay, looks like we may need to check that. Thank you, Jack, I see that. Uh, if you've missed some of the previous tutorials, if you go here to the Apex website, go to our homepage, scroll right here to the bootcamp uh, icon, go to the training page, okay? Um, where can you sign up for future webinars? That's right here under number two, okay? And Jack just alerted me to a little issue we need to fix here on a couple of things, uh, but I'll check that out. But you can register for the upcoming webinars or tutorials here, okay? Uh, over the next couple of weeks, what are we gonna be covering on the tutorial? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm gonna be talking about um, next week, I've had some questions about, hey, can we review obstructions again? What's an obstruction? What do I not want to tr trade into? But also, can we talk a little bit about using the larger tick charts? How do I really use my 60 minute chart? How do I use that 240 minute chart with the flux levels? I hear Lori talking about the 30 tick chart. What do I do with that? Okay, so we're gonna spend a little time next week on a tutorial talking about obstructions and using those larger charts. How does that sound to you guys, those of you that are new? You feel like that would be a little bit helpful to help understand why you have those charts and how to use those? That's something y'all would like to do, okay? Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, raising the grade from B to A, how to take things to the next level, okay? So that's kind of what's coming up the next couple weeks here. But if you scroll down towards the bottom here, okay? Third one from the bottom of the page, tutorials, okay? You click that, that's where all the recordings are. That is where today's recording will be. I assure you, you will want to watch today's uh, recording again, okay? Um, also, for those of you that have been on with us, one of the big things I did say is, hey, definitely go through and watch this recording right here, Getting Ahead of Obstructions. It's the webinar that Daryl did Tuesday night, really nailing down and clarifying what an obstruction is on each type of trade, what do you not want to trade into? What's a qualifying obstruction? I suggest you watch that webinar. I suggest you pause that webinar when you get to certain screenshots and take a screenshot of it. Be able to have it on your computer or print it out right in front of you to know what is an obstruction, what is not an obstruction, but make sure to watch those, okay? And this is also where today's recording will be, all right? So like I said, these are about raising the grade. Whatever level you're at right now, we wanna get you to a B grade when it comes to your trading. Only you can take yourself from a B to an A by applying yourself and digging in deeper. We're gonna talk about that some more as well. So let's do a little summary. What have we kind of covered to this point in the tutorials, okay? We've dug in deep. 
helps you get a better understanding and importance of order prints, not just what they are, but why, you know, what's behind the scenes, what makes order prints, why are they so important? How does it separate you from what we call the 90, 90, 90, meaning in this industry of retail day trading, 90% of new retail day traders lose 90% of their money within their first 90 days. Okay, and we talked about that should be one of your biggest focuses starting off as a new person is, hey, I recognize I'm getting into an industry where 90% of new people fail. So what am I gonna do to be different? How am I gonna make sure I'm in that 10% and not the 90%? And that's really where your focus needs to be. And we really dug into that with order prints. We covered the ETX, which is the enhanced um, TX trades. We've talked about the naked TX trades in a trend we talked about the naked tx trades in a trend with divergence and the other day we covered how to trade them in range bound markets so we've kind of established a base right we've kind of established a foundation of what's behind the scenes why are these charts important here's a few different trades here's the rules for those trades okay so now today what i want to do is i want to take it a little bit different direction about how to focus and bring it all together. Cause you're like, hey John, these have been great. Like I, I've got a lot of good feedback from you guys. You've seemed to enjoy these tutorials. You've seemed to enjoy kind of a little bit different approach and angle I take with training, but it's still a lot, right? Even though we've covered things a little more basic step by step, it's still like, hey, it's a lot for me to absorb. What, what do I do here? And something that I've really found over the years with training and webinars and, and literally thousands of new traders is, and also myself, it's so easy to get caught up in the charts. So easy to get caught up in, I want the secret sauce. I want the holy grail. I want the perfect trade that never wins. And I'm struggling, I'm having some losing days. I'm having some losing weeks. I'm not doing well sometimes. I must need something else on my chart. I must need a new trade set up. I must need instead of stepping back sometimes and realizing, hey, where where really is the issue? Okay, um, quick question. How many of you guys were not, okay, how many of you guys were not part of our Apex 2020 live event online? Okay, one of the talks I gave during that was about my morning routine and some things about morning routine. Who has not heard that or who has not been a part of that okay quite a few of you yeah because most of you on here are brand new in our boot camp so I'm gonna kind of redo you know some of you said yeah I was on there I'm kind of gonna redo and re-give that talk but then I'm gonna add a, a, an extra bit to it um, about I'm kind of gonna break this up between like morning prep of pre-trading and then during trading, how to stay focused, okay? And how to really put all this together because we've taught you some trades, we've taught you this, but it's like, okay, that's great, but how do I do it? I understand how, right? But what about why? Or like, I understand what the trades are, but how, okay? Um, Kevin says, as a basic element, does every order setup include an Xbox? Yes, in the, well, any TX trade in the sniper system, the ETX, trading naked ETXs with the trend, divergence, range bound, yes, all include an Xbox, okay? So let's talk a little bit about focus and bringing it all together, how to stay on track, and we're gonna kind of break it down one day at a time, how to stay consistent and stay focused. Because a lot of times, and I know many of you have seen this, is the battle, you ever heard, oh, trading, it's about the battle of the bulls and the bears, right? But you, I'm sure, learned already, the battle is really with yourself. I've seen so many of you say, hey, I had a rough day today, and when I looked back, I realized it was me, I screwed up. I didn't stick to the rules, I didn't do this. And you realize the battle is really with yourself, right? So let's talk a little bit about what's kind of the first thing you do each day like how do we start off our trading day like what is the first thing you do every day what's the first thing you did today 
All right, how did you get your day going? Well, okay, to break it down, <laughs> first thing you got to do is wake up, right? <laughs> you got to wake up and get out of bed. And, and Michael says, get a Diet Coke, right? But let's talk about your trading day this morning even, okay? I mean, you were up, you were fresh, you were ready to go. You're feeling great. You've got your computer ahead of you. You're, you're sharp. You're fresh. You're awake. You're in the elite room. You've got all your charts ready. You've got all your rules ready. You are just ready to knock it out. King of the world. You're going to rock it, right? Was that every one of you today, this morning? Was that every one of you this morning feeling fresh and great and ready to go? Your mind is sharp. You've got it. Or was that you right there? Was that you? Was that you this morning? Hmm? How about that? Was that you? Groggy as can be, half awake in front of your computer trading charts? That's Leonard right there, he says. Randy says he wish he had that much hair. Right? Or how about that? Leonard, was that you? Was that you this morning? Hey, thank goodness. Thank goodness that we don't have cameras in the elite room, right? We don't want to be seeing that. Thank goodness no one can really see what you're looking like in the morning's trading, right? Or how about that? Right? You're laying in bed, half asleep, the alarm went off, you rolled over and grabbed the laptop off the floor, and oh man, I better get in that, get in that elite room. I'm still laying in bed. I can't even see straight. Right? Or, there we go. Yeah, I rushed up here. Couldn't even get dressed. Woohoo! I'm gonna jump up and down in my skibbies and my little tidy waddies when I got a, a win, right? <laughs> you, you, you getting the point here, guys? Oh man, it's 7:20. It's 9:27 a.m. I have to start pressing some buttons in the elite room in eight minutes. I can't trade till 9:35. I got eight minutes. Oh, let me shake the cobwebs, run upstairs, and try to start pressing money. Pressing buttons for live money. I'm waking up at the last minute. I got to go. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, that sounds scary, Stephen. Exactly. But say it, say me, don't lie. How many of you, one of these pictures is you in the morning, in the elite room, in front of charts, about to press buttons? One of these multiple screens. How many of you are like, yeah, that's me? I know you're lying. There's more of you than that. Because you know what? I've been there too. Okay? We've all been there. Tell me, how good is a sniper going to be trying to make a once-in-a-lifetime shot to a high-value target being in one of these conditions? Right? I mean... Would you want to be on the road driving with your family and your kids around a bunch of people that are in one of these conditions in the morning? No. You're not going to put your life at stake and your family's life at stake looking like one of the, these, right? Right, Stephanie? Yeah. No one's going to put their life at stake wanting to be around a whole bunch of people driving like this and risk themselves. Why are you willing to put your family's livelihood and your live money and your future, especially right now with everything going on, why are you willing to risk pressing a button in one of these conditions, right? Uh, maybe I need, should I take this trade? I need more coffee. I can't see straight. Uh, I had a bad day. This doesn't work. Really? You know what I mean? So are you going to be at the top of your game in one of these conditions? Are, if you're a race car driver, are you going to be at the top of your game? Being able to stay in the lane, being able to make the corners. But more than anything, what is on each side of you? Who's coming up behind you? What if there's a wreck up in front of you? Can you avoid that obstruction ahead of you when you're racing down the road? Can you see those obstructions ahead of you to work around it or go around it? You know what I mean? What about Michael Jordan, right? 
NBA All-Star, record-breaking. Do you think he showed up to a game looking like that or feeling like that in any way? Or a brain surgeon. If you're going in for brain surgery and you're laying on that operating table and they're about to put a mask on you and gas you and knock you out and your brain surgeon walks in with a scalpel in his hand looking like any of those pictures right there, what are you going to do? You're going to you're gonna hop your butt off that table and run. You are not going to get knocked out and risk your life with that brain surgeon looking like any of that, are you? It's just common sense. Then why do you do it here? Why do you do it when it comes to your business, to your trading, to your live money, to your future? Why do you do that? It should be no different, right? What about a, a an airline pilot? <laughs> you hop on a plane and your pilot walks in looking like that and says, all right, guys, let's go. Mm-mm, get me the hell off this plane, right? Okay, so, you know, Stephen says, hey, today I even thought about dressing up in the mornings to help myself make it more serious. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm not saying you got to get in a suit and tie, but actually we're going to talk about that, Stephen. It can help you feel better, more awake. So trading and being successful at trading starts with daily focus. And it starts with your preparation of each day. What you do each day consistently day after day adds up and helps you meet your goal so we want to talk about how to make the most of each day and I want to break it down to you like this okay when it comes to your trading if you're a trader you basically have two part-time jobs your f job number one is preparing yourself before the trading session starts getting yourself prepared in the right mindset the second part-time job is actually executing that trading session and then you stop when you're at net three profitable and that's it right so let's talk about morning routine i know that not everybody trades the same schedule okay i know not everybody can trade the mornings i know some of you are overseas someone mentioned hey i'm in australia so my trading time is 11 or something at night i get all that okay and some of this you're going to have to customize to your own personal schedule your family and your kids and all that but I'm gonna base an example here off a morning trader okay some of the trades in the morning they're in the elite room by 9 30 and you know they trade until 11 30 okay I'm you can customize a few but I want to talk about how to prepare in the morning and then spend a two two and a half hour trading session and being done for the day okay so I know some of you are like, well, I can't do that. Well, okay, that's just understand this, all right? And your assignment for the weekend is going to be to kind of help customize this to you. But let's go through an example a little bit, okay? And I can tell you, and this is very basic, but I can tell you with my personal trading over the years, I've always done better when I follow a schedule. I'm, I'm, I'm very scheduled. I'm very, Daryl likes to call me anal, but, you know. I can be, but I do, and this is just a small example of kind of my trading schedule and my morning schedule, okay? And I, I keep track of it personally on um, an Excel doc. I like to do that because I have my, this is just a little cut and paste. I have my whole schedule set up where, you know, it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And as I go through and do things, you know, I like to grab them and, and delete them. It's, you know, and move the cells, it, hey, it's off, it's off. I, I have to have a list and I have to have my list slowly dwindle to see progress myself. You know what I mean? That's, that's just me. But, um, so just a quick kind of run through here. All right. And these are based on Eastern times. Something that's very important to me is I hate waking up last minute and running to the computer to get it open and make sure my charts are properly and, and get in the elite room. I hate that. It, it ruins my day. It ruins my morning. If I start my morning off like running behind, feeling eager, feeling anxious, heart racing, rushing, uh, I'm a mess, right? I just am a mess, okay? So I like to get up 
and literally, like I will literally wake up, get out of bed. I first of all walk straight to the kitchen, get my coffee going, grab one of my health drinks, and I go straight upstairs, okay? Yes, I'm half awake and looking ridiculous when I get to my computer, but this is an hour and a half before trading. And I get all my screens turned on because I have a bunch of them. If I'm gonna you know, reset anything or clear cash in the mornings or get my workspaces open or make sure my you know, um, you know, know, accounts and ATMs are selected, I do all that as soon as I wake up. Okay, especially if for whatever reason I have to reset, start my computer in the morning, it takes a little while to load. I'm doing that an hour and a half before trading. That way I can walk away, let my computer do its thing. How many of you are rushing last minute market's about to open the elite rooms kicking off and you've got two minutes and you're adjusting your chart and you're fixing something and, oh crap i've got to restart for whatever reason and my workspace is taking 10 15 minutes and you just feel ruined you just feel all out of sorts right you know what i mean so my first thing is i'm straight away coming and getting all my computers up and going all my screens go everything is just set and i'm walking away okay and it's very hard for me to do sometimes to work out right away in the mornings. But if you push yourself to do it, 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 it can really helps. It kind of helps wake you up, helps clear the cobwebs. I get my computer stuff going. I'm going into my game room here. I'm, I'm normally turning on some news can see what's going on, see the latest Corona stuff, see what happened overnight in the market, just watching some news. And I'm doing a quick two mile elliptical workout. It takes about 20 minutes, right? I can really wake up. I can really work up a sweat. It helps me clear the cobwebs. It's, you know, it gets the blood flowing. It really helps me wake up. Okay. And then from there, I pop back in my office and just again, check everything, make sure all the ATMs are up, look at overnight levels of the market, mark some levels. I look over my big charts, like my 30 tick, my 16, 240. I draw some levels out. We're going to talk about that next week. Oh, John, what do you mean? Okay, well, I look at some of the big levels for the day and I draw those out on my charts. I'm kind of starting my day an hour before the market even opens to kind of know where are the end zones today? Where are we playing at today, right? What are the big levels to look out for today? I'm looking at the bigger view of the market. I'm logging into Elite Room right then to where I'm logged into Elite Room an hour ahead. Like it's, it's all set and done. I've got all my rules and lists ready, everything ready to go. You know, I, I check anything, you know, anything personal I need to check or finances or email, handle some family stuff. Everything's done an hour ahead of time. Okay. And then from there, I'm, I'm going back downstairs. I'm going to eat a good breakfast. I'm going to take some vitamins and pills. I've already had a good workout. I'm, I'm feeling awake. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to shower. How many of you are sitting there, not only in your skibbies trading, but you hadn't showered in two days. You definitely haven't brushed your teeth for the day, right? I mean, come on. What kind of condition are you in to really focus, right? Take a shower. Get dressed. Brush your teeth. Shave. Put on some deodorant. Comb your hair. Feel more confident. Feel more awake. I'm not saying you got to put on a suit and tie or a dress and heels, but don't be in there with crazy hair and hadn't brushed your teeth you can barely see out of your eyes you're in your boxers right feel treat it like a real job yes treat it like a real business damien says damn i forgot to brush my teeth this morning go brush them damien come back come on floss while you're at it <laughs> feel awake feel alive feel like a human okay feel professional feel everyone feels more confident after they're awake and they've showered and they've shaved maybe done a little to their hair put on some clothes you feel more professional and awake okay do it prepare yourself wake up all right it's like well this is one of the things they talk about of you know to work from home you can work in your pajamas and you know what trust me done it for years you will always perform better when you're up and awake and not just because it's oh, a physical thing and I look good and I've had some good hygiene and brushed my teeth. You have to mentally get these cobwebs out of here. Wake up, have some coffee and vitamins. 
hop on the elliptical for 20 minutes sweat a little bit clear out the cobwebs you know get the blood flowing eat some good breakfast take a shower just those few things right there think about how much more awake and alert and aware you are okay and you're sitting down to trade and you've already had your morning time you've already had some time you've already eaten breakfast you're showered you're it is a completely different world it will completely turn you around of your ability to focus okay and then this is very important to me by 9 20 i'm back at my desk okay and and i really want you to to think about this this is so important right here so by 9 20 i'm not going to start trading until what time what time can i start pressing buttons after the market opens Nine thirty-five, right? Eastern time, right? So I've got a good ten or fifteen minutes. Okay. So where am I at? Compared to some of those pictures I showed you in the beginning, I'm at a whole other world right now, right? I'm not there half awake with scrag scraggly hair. Alright? I'm not there in my boxers I'm not there half awake and can't see anything I'm at my desk 10 minutes before the market even opens I've already got everything open on my computer and done I have already checked news I've already checked all my levels I'm already in the elite room all of my ATMs and accounts are selected everything's ready to go I'm not feeling any pressure right I've already had my coffee. I've already worked out for 20 minutes. I've already eaten. I've already taken pills. I've already taken a shower. I've already woken up and shit. I'm pretty calm right now. I'm pretty relaxed right now. I'm pretty awake and aware right now, right? And so what I like to do for those 10 or 15 minutes before trading is, and this is so vital guys, I just prepare myself to be calm. It's kind of the opposite of a sports game. What do you see before a sports game or before a football game, right? We're in the locker room and, and the coach is yelling and screaming and we're jumping up and down. And yeah, hoorah, woo, hype, woo, yeah, let's go kill it, let's go. This is the exact opposite of I'm preparing beforehand to be whew, calm bored chill i'm preparing myself mentally for the next it's anti-hype exactly damien it's anti-hype because i don't want to be all hoorah yeah yeah let's go press buttons press buttons press buttons for the next two hours press buttons let's go no i need to be preparing myself of for the next two hours i need to be bored as crap i need to be calm I need to sit here and just say, okay, I know what I have to do. I know my rules and I'm just going to execute them and then move on with my day. It's the opposite of that, you know, locker room. I have to prepare myself to be patient. I have to remind myself that it pays to be patient. I have to remind myself Trading is not a battle of the bulls and the bears. Trading is the battle of me, myself, right? I have to get myself ready for this. The biggest thing that could screw up this trading session for the next two hours is me. I have to remind myself to be calm, be bored, be patient. I'll put on some music. I'll use the Calm app. Any of y'all ever use the Calm app on your phone? You can listen to a little story, you can listen to a little music, you can listen to the little raindrops on the leaves, okay? This is good time for meditation time or prayer time or, you know, reading your scriptures time, reading a, a, a motivational book. I mean, even just that 10 minutes, when you can sit down 10 to 15 minutes before the market opens, you're already fully awake and aware and showered, like physically you're good, right? Do you see the difference here? 
that first hour, hour and 15 of, my, of the day was getting me physically where I need to be. Awake, coffee, vitamins, energy drink, working out, showered, shaved, dressed, food, computers ready. Like physically I'm where I need to be. Now I can be calm and get my head where I need to be. Get my emotions where I need to be. Does that make sense? And I have 10 to 15 minutes to do that. And then, okay, everybody's in the elite room. It's now 9.35. Deep breath. Okay, let's start looking. That's a complete different world compared to those pictures I showed you earlier, isn't it? How many of you can say honestly that you do anything close to this? To put yourself in that state of preparation before trading. Show of hands. But can you see how important that is? Some of you say, hey, I'm about there. Hey, I, I was on the seminar in March and now I've changed that. But, but can you just see how powerful that could be for you now some of you that are brand new are probably saying oh gosh this is that psycho babble mental crap i don't need that just show me how to press a button yeah stop right there you will fail until you get this part and the mentality part and the psychology part and the discipline part okay it is extremely very important to put yourself in that right mindset so again you have two part-time jobs the first one is preparing yourself to execute a trading session and then your next part-time job is to actually execute that trading session so we've talked about preparing yourself right I've gone through this with you a little bit of an example there of you know some of the the things that I do in the mornings and a schedule and like I said, I know not each of you can keep that exact schedule. Not each of you has that same routine, but figure out what you gotta do to change yourself to be ready physically and emotionally for the trading day. And a lot of times that does start the day before. Okay, somebody just said that. I think, my, yeah, Michael, you need to be to bed earlier. Preparing yourself does start the night before. Get some good sleep. And part of getting good sleep is having some downtime. I know what y'all do because I've done it for years, right? I'm up on these damn charts until 2 a.m. testing and back testing and market replay and check this and check this and check. Oh, it's 2 a.m. I better go to bed. Five minutes later, I'm laying in bed expecting to fall asleep. No, my mind is going and going and going, right? Have some downtime at night. Get away from trading, get away from Apex, get away from the markets, get away from your computer, spend time with your family, have a good balance in life. Have a good balance with everything you do. Eat well, sleep well, good nutrition, workout, vitamins, you know, mentally and spiritually well. You have to be well-rounded and healthy in order for you to be balanced enough to make good decisions and be focused okay so enabling yourself to start the morning properly really does have a lot to do with preparing yourself the night before with all these things okay that you can wake up and focus on these things so we talked about in the morning what do you have to do to prepare yourself mentally physically and spiritually in the morning before the trading session Feed your body and your brain. Wake up, get the blood flowing. Whether that's going for a run, working out a little bit, whatever exercise that is. You know, Gary, um, one of our, uh, you know, uh, trade leaders, Gary, a few years ago, he started swimming and he used to, Marion, what time did he get up? Like five in the morning or something? And he'd be swimming by 5.30, right? And it just completely changed his day. It completely changed his trading it completely changed his mood because he can be a grumpy old coot sometimes don't tell him i said that but being up early and waking up and having that just alone time it just changed his life it really did 
yeah, Marin said up at five and he'd go up to the, you know, for him it was, it was swimming. And it just completely changed everything for him. Get your computers and everything up and going way ahead of time. Get your charts where they need to be ahead of time. Get logged into the elite room an hour ahead of time. Have everything set up to where when you come back, to sit down right before the trading session there's nothing stressing you out that you have to do you're not stressed you're not rushed you've got you know calm quiet time don't be anxious do you see the big difference in these analogies compared to you woke up at 9 15 and you're rushing and you're rushing to get up to you know to your to your computer you're rushing to log in you're anxious and you're stressed and you're just a mess you're all over the place your hair looks like a rat nest you're just in a daze are you gonna make good decisions are you in a proper place to be pulling the trigger on anything at all right and then you get that anxiety right you're stressed what if you're what if you're late oh crap it's 9 45 eastern they're already in the elite room trading. I'm behind. I already missed 15 minutes. Oh, crap. And you're running upstairs and you're rushing and you're rushing. Your heart's beating. You're feeling behind. And, oh, my God. What did I miss out on? Crap. They already had two winners. I, I got to take the next. I just got to press a button. I have to have to. What most likely happened after you press that button? Yep. Lost. Right. How many of you done that? Crap, I got in here late. I've got to trade. i got to start pressing buttons. Right? And, you're, you, and, and, and the whole rest of the morning is a mess, isn't it? Your head is just in a mess the rest of the morning because you're just feeling that stress, anxiety, that heartbeat, and, and you feel like you missed out, so you got to what? you got to make up for it, Right? You feel like you missed out, so you got a revenge trade because of a loss, or you got to make up some trades because of what you missed out on. How does your profit and loss normally turn out for the day when you're doing that? Yeah, pretty bad, right? Really bad. Guys, you know what? This whole I have to trade today false false yeah ouch Damien right hurts you do not it, it don't sacrifice or cut corners if you're late you're late if something happens and I wake up late or if I was up late the night before or whatever it was if I woke up an hour late then all of this crap right here gets pushed back an hour. I'm still doing this morning routine. Because if without it, I'm still not going to be in the right spot. And I'm going to be even worse because not only did I skip a big part of my routine, but now I'm running late and feeling the stress as well. I just double whammied myself. I should just walk away and not even trade for the day. If I'm not going to stick to my routine to make sure that I'm in a proper state of mind. Don't sacrifice it. When you're running late, don't rush it, guys. There's plenty of trades. Just look at a dang chart. There's plenty of trades. You can, you can get your three trades in. You might have to trade a little longer or check in after lunch. But it's about quality, not quantity. Don't rush it. Still do what you got to do to prepare yourself. Think about it like this. If you're used to coming home and being home by 530 and you've got to get dinner started by 6 because the family always eats at 630, right? You get home at 530, start cooking at 6, you're eating at 630. Well, what happens when you, well, crap, I got home late. It's now 615. But we have to eat by 6.30. So I'm going to just only throw in about half the ingredients to this. I'm only going to cook this about half the time because it's got to be on the table and people eating it by 6.30. So I'm just going to 
screw up the ingredients, only put half the ingredients in, only cook it half the time I'm supposed to, but dang it, we're going to be eating by 6.30. Is that, damn, is that meal going to taste any damn good to anyone? I mean, just honestly. Some of you are laughing like, okay, John, this is a very elementary example. Hello. But really? Is it? That meal's not going to taste good to anyone, is it? How's that meal going to taste to you? Well, how do you think that loss is going to taste? How are you going to like that loss? Because you cut corners, you rushed something, because in your mind you, quote-unquote, had to start pressing buttons by a certain time. You don't have to. You can wait. D does that analogy make sense, guys? I mean, do you get my elementary basic point here okay if something is screwed up in the morning with your routine your schedule your whatever you still stick to the proper preparations or else it's not going to taste real good you're not going to be happy with it okay so keep that in mind so prepare yourself properly it's better to miss trades than to just take bad ones would you rather have no trades or losing trades? That's a simple answer. It's a simple answer. Okay? So it's like I said. It's this whole thing here for the morning is the exact opposite of a pregame locker room prep. It's anti-hype. It's calming down. It's being prepared to be bored. It's understanding I'm paid to be patient. I'm planning to be patient. I'm setting myself up to be patient. I know what my rules are, and I'm ready to go. Part-time job one, done. Does that make sense? Does everybody understand why I'm breaking this up? Hey, I'm a trader. Well, oh, really, that's your job? Well, I actually have two jobs. I have one job, which is to prepare myself properly to trade and get myself to where I need to be, All right? Part-time job number two is now executing that trading session. Understood, okay? All right, so executing the trading session is so much easier when you're properly prepared. Have a clean workspace area. I've seen some of your guys' desks, and I don't even know how you could find a mouse. I've seen people's desks with crap on it, last week's freaking McDonald's bags, right? Two weeks ago, Dorito chip bags, stuff everywhere. Have a clean workspace. Not only have you gotten up and, you know, prepared yourself mentally and physically and spiritually but your your workspace have a clean workspace feel professional feel confident feel good some of you maybe need some background noise while you're executing your trade session i know a lot of people say while i'm trading it's so easy to get distracted you know i'll put on some music in the background hey great some people say i keep my calm app on the whole time i'm trading some people like to have some news up. I know some people even have movies or shows up in the background that they've seen 10 million times. That way it's like there's something over here. I've got some background noise. It's helping distract me, but I know what's going to happen. It's not like I'm, oh, i got to watch this. It's not distracting me from the charts, but it's helping keep me focused. Hey, each person's different, right? You might need that. Um, some people stand up at their desk. How easy is it to just sit there and watching all these screens and your eyes get blurry and you fade away? I do this all the time. I stand up, stand up at my desk, right? Do a little workouts at my desk sometimes. I've got a, a, a leg weight thing, uh, some arm weight things, and then one of those chest squeeze thing. You know what? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself getting groggy. I'm finding myself not being able to focus. Stand up at my desk. Do a couple little squats and workout exercises while you're watching the markets. Why? Okay, hey, there's a potential. Let me sit down. Keep the blood flowing. Right? But otherwise, turn everything else 
off. Don't be on Facebook, right? Don't be on Instagram. Don't be answering your phone unless it's something important, okay? You don't want those kind of distractions. If you need background noise that helps keep you focused, do it. But turn everything else off, okay? Because right now you're at work. You have one job and one focus, and that's to follow the rules and get to your net three profitable trades. And you want to keep this routine because routine equals consistency. Consistency equals consistent results. And consistent results day after day over time adds up, right? And then you're doing these consistent things not with just three trades a day on one contract. Now it's three trades a day on two contracts and then on three contracts and on four. So routine is consistency. Consistency equals consistent results. Consistent results over time adds up and you can compound it. So you have to forget about just focusing on what's the secret sauce, what's the holy grail, what's this secret magical trade setup. You already have the tools. You already have the trade setups. We've gone over those trade setups. You know what they are. Okay, right now you don't need new trades and new setups and new charts. Now it's about how do I focus each and every day and stay consistent on what I already have? How do I, you know, put to use what I already have? Okay. So like I said, we, we've taught you a lot on the charts and the levels and the setups. And we'll teach you more things that give you more ammo as well. But it's up to you to shoot the gun properly each day consistently. Okay. So that's more what today's tutorial is about is, is, is that morning preparation and focus and especially that quiet time right before the market opens. How many of you have gotten one of these in the mail already? Looking at it right now, not yet, great, okay. So, some of you have already gotten these. Uh, some, I know a big shipment of them just got to Daryl's uh, two days ago, I believe he told me. So these are coming out to you, okay? Um, this was something that we had given out and had made up for um, the Apex Live event. And this was kind of an idea that I had to do this because this is something that I've always done myself, okay? Yeah, make fun of me all you want. I'm a little anal about, you know, some of my little list and check offs and this and that, right? So I've already gone over this with you of, of my morning list that, you know, I do every morning as I'm getting ready. And I, like I said, I like to mark them off. Okay, I've done that. Boom. Out of there. Done for the day. What's next? Boom. I need to see my list dwindling for me to feel progress. You know what I mean? But once I'm trading, something I've done for a long time, I have a notebook right in front of me, like just above my keyboard. And on the outside of my notebook, I should have just taken a picture of that. But on the outside of my notebook, you know, like when you have a three ring binder, like on the outside, you've got the, the plastic protector and you can slide a little piece of paper, you know, on your three ring binder, you know what I mean? I had these questions listed out, okay? I had a couple more too, but basically it's so easy for me to get distracted while I'm trading, okay? And, you know, especially with helping to run Apex, right? Something is, you know, oh, something came up over here or something came up over here. Oh, what's going on with the charts? What's going on? Oh, uh, oh, is that a TX? Should I trade it? Should... It's so easy for me to get distracted. And I got to the point where one of the things during my prep, my, my little 10 minute quiet time before the market opened, one of the things I had to start telling myself was don't get frustrated, prepare yourself ask 1,000 questions today. Let me say that again. I would have to tell myself 
over the next two hours, John, prepare yourself. You're going to ask 1,000 questions. What does that mean? Okay, follow me here. You've done all your morning prep. You're awake. You're alert. You've worked out. You've had quiet time. Boom, the market's open. You're ready to go. Okay, well, I got this chart, and I've got this chart, and the market's, and, and I got this chart over here, and I got to look at this level, and okay, now there's an exhaustion box, and that's a trapped order. Should I take it? Do I take it? Wait, what is the room doing? What did Daryl and Lori just say? Crap. Now somebody says something in the elite room. Okay, now what le what is the market? Stop. Stop. Look at your chart. Ask yourself these questions a thousand times a day. You're looking at your chart. Okay. What is the market doing? Is the market trending? Yes. Okay. What direction is the market trending? Up. Okay, so if the market's trending up, you're only looking to take trades in one direction. What direction is that? This is not rhetorical, guys. Jump in on this. Like, if you get this part, okay? Is the market trending? Yep. Which direction? Up. So am I looking for long or short? Long. Okay, am I stressed right now? Am I trying to figure out, crap, what were my rules? And, and what about with range bound when it's like that? Now, with range bound, I don't have to, who gives a crap? If you asked yourself that question, is the market trending? Yes. What direction? Up. Okay. You're, right now, you're only taking longs. But what's the next part of that? Well, is there divergence in the market right now? Nope, no divergence. Okay, so then I'm only looking for a long trade. Am I really stressed right now? Of, oh my God, this is so overwhelming, all those damn webinars that John and Daryl did and the rules are so, the market is going up, there's no divergence, I'm only looking for an up trade. So I'm just calmly waiting for what? I need a couple of down close bars, right? I need the market to pull back a couple bars. And then once it goes and starts to make an up close bar, I have an order there. Done. Does that make sense? Like I'm not having to go crazy on what do I do and let me check out another chart and I'm stressed, I'm anxious. I, I just asked what's the market doing I know what it's doing. How many potential trade possibilities are there? One. One. Yeah, but there's all these rules and do I trade this and do I not trade? No, there's not. Think about it. We've taught you what? ETX trades, trending trades, trending with divergence, range. Okay, is the market ranging? Yes. Oh, well, I need to look at this and I need to look at that. And I No, you don't. You have a complete separate different set of rules for a ranging trade. Correct? Correct? So, ah, yes, the market's ranging. Boom, got my set of rules. Okay. All right. Ten minutes later, you've done a trade. You haven't done a trade. Okay. I had to go to the bathroom. Now I came back. I'm looking at my charts again. Let's start asking the questions. Is the market trending? Yes or no? Oh, yes, it is. It's trending up. Is there divergence? Yes, there is. So my only trade potential right now is what direction? Market's trending up but it's in divergence. So what direction of trade could I possibly take? Short, selling. Do I need to be stressed and freaking out and heartbeat and wondering what the hell to do? 
I'm only looking for one potential setup right now against the trend. Correct. Now, every bar that keeps going up, I say, okay, if a bar closes down and it's a potential trade, I'd want to get in. But every bar that keeps going up, I know I'm waiting for one to go down, right? So every time this is happening, and I'm imagining, what if the next one closed down and I got into it? Is there an obstruction just below it that would make me not want to get into it? I'm asking that ahead of time, right? I'm not waiting to enter the damn trade and then look for one. I'm just saying, okay, any second now, any one of these bars could close the other way. If it did, would I want to get in it? Or can I just already see that there's a big stack below it? So I wouldn't want to. So now I'm not stressed at all because I know I'm not trading right now. Right? Does that start to come together? And you just constantly keep going through these questions. Because once you narrow down, is it... Is it trending or is it divergence? Is it ranging? Is there an obstruction? Like these questions are a filter. And once you have that filter, you know exactly what it is you're supposed to do or not supposed to do. Does that make sense? What if we took this a step further? What if you had this right here on your desk in front of you or a printout of these questions, whatever. And then right underneath it, what if you made yourself a cheat sheet? So the very first thing, like if you looked at, if you look down right now, you see your keyboard and your mouse. And right in front of that, you see these questions. And it's the top of a stack. And what about underneath this? If your next printout sheet said trending rules. The sheet under that said divergence rules the sheet underneath that said ranging rules and the sheet underneath that was a printout of those obstruction rules from the webinar i told you to watch make sense okay so that's what i have in front of me i'm asking myself these questions over and over again is the market this this or this the market's ranging sweet well, let me flip back three pages ranging rules got my rules listed out for ranging got a little picture example of what a ranging market looks like okay this is all I need to focus on is the ranging rules setup well, but there's so many different trades. Is there? The market condition tells you which trade to take. It tells you, is it time to trade trending rules? Is it time to trade range bound rules? Okay. So be prepared to ask yourself these questions a thousand times over and over and over. Stop for a minute. Let's think about what we've learned. What are the different market conditions? Trend, range, chop, divergence, right? Do we trade chop? Do we trade chop? No. So really, what is it that you're doing? You're either gonna trade a trending market a divergent trending market or a range market. Three things. It's really just three things you're looking for. Which one of these three is happening right now in the market? So when I determine which one of the three, then I know which one and only one set of rules to follow. This will tell you the only trade you're looking for, the only direction of trade you're looking for. 
it will tell you the type of trade and the condition of the market then all you have to do is sit calm patient ready and be ready for that trade setup when it happens you're looking ahead for that trade setup because you're already aware of what setup you need to look for you're already aware of what direction the trade will be in right I've seen so many people in the elite room going, oh, there was a down close bar with a, 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 a TX. Oh, wait, here's an up close bar with a TX. Do we take it? Wait, here's a down. Do we take it? Oh, wait, this bar looks like it's forming a TX. If it forms one, would we take the? You should know this way before. You should already know what the market condition is because you're asking yourself a thousand times. Yeah, Randy, exactly. It's just categorizing. Leslie says, yeah, I've seen that in the room. Okay, but do you do you get the difference now? Do you get what I'm trying to teach you here? You should know this ahead of time to where you're not looking at a chart going, oh man, if this, oh, this bar has a exhaustion box on both ends. So now if a trapped order comes on one on either end, do, do I take it either way? You should already know. Okay? You should already know if this bar does this and it has this, then we've got this. So, And you want to think ahead, look ahead, especially for these obstructions. Oh, hey, there's a stack level here. So many of you are getting into trades and then looking for a stacked level. If you already know what you're looking for ahead of time, hey, I'm just waiting here for a bar to for the market to pull back a few bars and then close up. If that happened right now, I'd be going right into the stack. So I, I wouldn't trade it anyway right now. Like you should know that ahead of time. Okay, let's look at this. Let's say that we were looking at this live. We, we don't see any of this to the right. Let's say that we're looking at it live right here, right? We don't see any of this. We're in a live market right here. I'm asking myself the questions. Is the market trending? Well, it came down, pulled up, came down. So I'm saying, yes, the market's trending. Okay, what direction is the market trending in? Short. Okay, so if we're right in here live, what's my next question? Is there divergence? Well, this, this push down short here was 4,800. This next push down was 8,600. So nope, it's not divergent. So what does this tell me right now? If I'm right here, what does this tell me? I'm in a downtrend. I'm not divergent. So I'm only right now looking to take a short trade. Nothing else. Does everybody get that? If live, I'm right here. It's short. There's no divergence. All I can take is shorts. So am I really scared? Because for me to take a short trade, what has to happen? An up close bar and at least another up close bar and then a potential short. Does that make sense? Does everybody see that? So while this is coming down, is, is my, do I have my finger on my mouse just ready to press a button, right? No, because I know what has to happen. I know it's got to be at least, okay. Because I, I know up close bars have to happen and then a down close bar to keep going with the trend, right? Does that make sense? Let me ask you a question. If this is coming down and we got one up close bar right here, then we have a down close bar. 
What would what would that be called? Chop, coil chop. Correct. So would I take that trade short? No. So those of you that just asked, oh wait, so you gotta have at least two opposing bars before it goes back with it? Yes. You understand why now? Because if it was just one opposing bar and then back in the direction, that would be called coal chop, according to Daryl's definition, right? So if I know I'm in a downtrend, it's not divergent, so I'm only looking to go short. Am I freaking out when this one bar closes up? Nope. Am I freaking out when the next bar closes up? Nope. But now am I saying, okay, now's the time for me to get ready, right? Right? Randy, I understand that. That's why we're remaking all of these. Everything's going to be remade, okay? We're working on it. I appreciate your input, but we're aware and we're working on it, okay? Let's leave it there. So does that make sense? I'm not freaking out while the market's coming down because I can't trade it short yet. I need one up close bar. Okay, not freaking out yet either, right? Because I can't do anything. I've got a second up close bar. Boom, now I'm in super alert mode. Make sense? Because now I have everything lined up to where if this next bar closes down and has a X box and trapped order, can I take that trade short by the rules? Yes. Now, it's coming down. We've asked all the questions. Is it trending? Is it divergence? We know we need this up close bar. We know we need this up close bar, right? As soon as this up close bar closes, what's the very first thing that I should be thinking about? If I'm telling myself, boom, if the next bar closed down and was an entry, I'd want to enter it. And I'd need it to go down two bars for me to take profit. So what am, what am I looking for? Up close bar, up close bar, boom. I'm immediately scanning down in here where I'd want to head to to get profit. Is there an obstruction? Is there a stack of too many magnets? Is there a stack of three order print? I'm, ask, I'm thinking ahead of if it closed down and was a valid trade, would I want to take it? Because is there going to be something in my way? And I want to look at that beforehand. Not after I've placed an order. But let's say this bar closed up. And let's say this bar closed up. And let's say we had a couple more up close bars before it went down. Every other bar that's going up, I'm thinking that way. If the next one reverses, would something be in my way? If the next one reverse, would something be in my way? If that answer is yes, then again, I have no stress because I ain't taking the damn thing. If my answer is no, there's nothing in the way. It'd be a good trade. I'm ready and watching. Did I lose anybody right there? Was that a light bulb for anyone right there? Like, oh, right. Got it. I don't need to be freaking out by every bar. I just need to understand what is happening with the market. What is the condition? Therefore, I know my setup and I, I know what it will look like. So I'm waiting to where it's like, okay, now I could potentially have a setup. So let me think ahead and think, would I even want to take it if I did? Because is there going to be an obstruction in the way? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Happily looking for the next trade. Okay. Good. 
Good, good. So do you understand now we're asking yourself these thousand these questions over and over again is just a filter. Is the market trending? Yes. Is there divergence? No. So what am I looking for? Okay. What about another example? Is the market trending? Yes, it came down. Okay, and it came down some more. So right here, if we were live right here, okay, what would be what would we be looking for? It's trending down. It's not divergent because it came down on 975. Now it's down here over 2,000. So I know I'm only looking for short, right? Market pulls back one bar. Oh, well, pulls back two bars. Ah, now I'm looking to go short, right? Well, the market went short, but it did not give me a valid setup, did it? So I did not go short. Now I see it coming down and I'm watching that OD because I can see it and I see we're divergent, right? So what am I asking myself right here? If all I can see is this bar, what, what are the questions I'm asking myself? Is the market trending? Yes. Is it divergent? Yes. So at this point, there's only one direction of trade I'm looking for. What is it? Long. Because I've narrowed down. It's trending, yes. Divergence, yes. Then I know my direction. Then what am I looking for? Okay, if I got a valid trade, would there be obstructions in my way? Would there be something that's telling me not to take it? Such as some yellow things right there. That makes sense. Michael, when you say, how did you get that out of that bar? What are you, not quite sure your question there, Michael. If you can clarify that, I'd be happy to answer. Oh, how, how did I get it out of this bar? How would I known right here that I w we were divergence? Is that divergent? Is that what you're asking? Well, because I can look back and I can see the last, um, what do you call it? I, I can see what the last push here was, right? I, I can see what the OD number was compared to what it would be currently here, okay? So I already can see that divergence happening, okay? Because we haven't reversed here. We're coming down here so I could see that plot. I can see that number. So does that make sense? I've clarified, are we trending? Yes, we're divergent? Yes, and it clarifies my rules. Understand? Okay, so a little while later in the day, I'm asking myself a thousand questions. Here, 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 here. Is the market trending? No. So let me ask you this. Is the market trending? No. So do I even need to ask myself, is there divergence? Because we're only looking for divergence in a trend. So is the market trending? My answer is no. So I don't have to ask about divergence. What is my next question? Is the market ranging? And is it ranging and I need to use ranging rules? Or is it choppy and I just need to stay the hell out? So what's the answer? It's ranging. And what would be one of the key things for us to know that by well because if i had an entry off the top or off the bottom or the top i do have enough room to profit going to the other side of the range right if i didn't have enough room to profit going to the other right bit of the range i'm going to say that's choppy and stay out so after i seen this you know one two three am i stressing in here going now is this going to be divergent is this going to be what am I doing? Ranging rules. 
flipping back to my third page of ranging rule notes that I took from the videos and I know it's very simple am I do I care about the color of the DR indicator in a ranging market no right what is the biggest number one rule that I need to be looking for in my ranging market I only want to take trades off the top or the bottom not in the middle right so I'm not worried about the trend I'm not worried about divergence a am I worried and all stressed about Ooh, right here in the middle of it is this bar gonna close up or is it gonna close down or is it I don't really care about the middle do I I only want to know is there a trade set up off the top or the bottom the only thing I'm worried about in the middle is that an obstruction just get made meaning if I did get a trade set up off the top and I want to take it here am I gonna I want to know that I have enough room from here to the bottom of the range to profit and I want to know is there any big obstructions in the middle that's in my way so that's all I'm doing I've asked myself the questions I've identified its ranging I know the ranging rules so I'm just relaxed chilled and I'm waiting until oh we got down close to the bottom of the range here let's see if we've got a trade set up to go up no we didn't let's wait let's wait let's wait okay now we're at the top of the range let's see if we get a setup to go down no we didn't no we didn't and there it is all right and while these bars are coming back up to the top of the range i'm looking below to go no we don't have a big stack of obstructions so if I get a down close bar here with a valid entry, should I take it? Yes or no? Yeah. So am I stressed and trying to go through a million different notes and rules? Or do I just know, okay, well, there's only one thing I can do right now. And if that happens, I'm waiting and I'm going to take it and go on and then start asking myself the questions again. Okay. So what are the possible conditions trending trending with divergence range bound or chop and we don't trade and chop anyway so literally all you're looking for all day during your second part-time job because remember you had a first part-time job which was preparing yourself mentally physically spiritually beforehand that's job number one second part-time job is to execute your trading session and your biggest job through that whole trading session is just to ask the questions are we trending are we trending with divergence are we range bound or we chop if we're chop what do you do stay out if you're one of these other three then you use the rules for that market and you wait for that trade setup and you look ahead like does that make sense does that help narrow down and simplify things a little bit of well, what do I do for these two hours like how do I keep track of all this you ask those questions a thousand times a day simplify clarify and focus if you're driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour are you looking at the end of your hood of your car or are you looking way ahead and looking all around that's how you have to be here say what condition are we in so therefore what trade am I looking for and if I know the only potential trade I'm looking for right now, I can look ahead and see where that trade might would be. I can look ahead and say, if that trade happened here, would I be trading into an obstruction? Because then I don't want to take it, just like on the car. I don't want to look at the end of my hood. I want to look at the damn concrete barrier I'm going to run into up there. Right? 
I have to be looking ahead to know exactly what I'm doing and what I'm looking for. And do I hit the gas? Do I hit the brakes? Do I turn? Okay. So you've learned these different setups. You've learned about market condition, how powerful order prints is. And sometimes that can overload your brain. So you have to just stop. Trend, divergent, range. Am I looking for a long or short? Is there an obstruction? That's it. So list out these rules. If you haven't gotten your marker board yet, list out those questions. And then go back through these videos and list out some rules and notes, okay, of what you need to remember of what are my trending rules? What are the divergent rules? What are the ranging rules? What are considered obstructions? If I have my questions on the top of the stack and underneath that I've got trend, divergent, range, obstruction, that should get me through my whole day. Because all day long, I'm asking the questions to say, okay, is it trending? Yes. Then turn the page over to my trending rules. Okay, I'm looking for this, this, this. Got it. I'm waiting. Got it. I'm waiting. Is it ranging? Yep. Let me turn to my range ground rules listed out. Maybe I printed out a little example of that too. Like I know some people have gone back through the videos. They've written out some trending, some ranging rules or a couple little notes. And they printed off a screenshot of one of the examples of my PowerPoint here, just to help remind them, this is what a ranging looked like. They literally spent a weekend making themselves what they called a business in a book. Because it's like, okay, my questions are in front of me. Bam, it's, the questions are the filter. Trending, divergence trending, range. Boom, it's range, okay. Let me flip back three pages to range. All right, here's what my range rules look like. Behind that, I've got the little notes of obstructions. Don't trade into double mini magnets. Don't trade into a stack of three. Don't trade into, okay, I'm just waiting. Make sense? Okay. So that's really your job. Though that is your two part-time jobs. And why is my PowerPoint locking up on me? Hold on here, guys. Something's locking up. Uh, give me a second. We did lock up a little bit here, and I don't know why. Okay. Sorry, give me just a second here, guys. I don't know what locked up there. Yeah, I've tried that. Okay, yeah, it's not like in PowerPoint. Oh. Give me one quick second here, sorry. Okay, well guys, I hope this is helping things come together because I know I've talked to many of you that are like, this is great and you really helped me understand this particular trade or that particular trade, but just doing all this, keeping all this, you know, in order in my head throughout the day, I'm not sure, you know, how to do that. I'm not sure how to really put this to practice um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that this helps you give me just one second here um, and that's part of what I'm talking about when I say that you really got to prepare yourself you know to to be bored okay is because during that time um, you know, you have to be calm, you have to be bored, you have to prepare yourself to say, hey, I'm gonna have to ask myself these questions literally a thousand times, right? And prepare yourself um, to ask them a thousand times. So 
All right, guys. Yeah, I'm having trouble again here. I'm not sure what is going on with my PowerPoint here. But anyway, so guys, that is kind of the assignment I want you guys to do over the weekend, okay? Is I, I want you to really spend some time this weekend and work on your routine. Whatever schedule it is you trade, whatever it is that you you know have to deal with in the mornings and family commitment, what can you do? And maybe it's not exactly, you know, you know, what I just covered with you. Maybe it's not exactly, um, you know, the same schedule that I had. Of course not. I don't expect that. Okay. But what can you do to change your morning routines? What can you do to help yourself be better prepared for every morning, starting Monday morning? Sit down and list that out. If you need to use an Excel doc like I did or whatever, list it out of what should you do there? What could you do different that really help your mind prepare better? Maybe you need to exercise more in the mornings. Maybe you're bad about not eating breakfast. Maybe you need to get up earlier, whatever it is. Work on your schedule, work on your morning routine, your job number one, your part-time job number one. What can you do better to prepare you and to get you in a good headspace? That makes sense? That's kind of assignment number one that I want y'all to focus on this weekend is what can I change to do better? And then step two, really focus on these things I talked about as far as the questions. Maybe actually take some time this weekend to go back through and watch these tutorials, okay? And make some notes for yourself on some trending rules, trending with divergence rules, range bound rules, okay? Go through right here, getting ahead of obstruction. Go through this webinar of Daryl's where he went through and talked about the exact obstructions. You can take screenshots of them and everything. Make yourself a little binder book. No, I didn't do it for you because it's a lot of work to do that. And everybody looking for something different. People respond in different ways. Some people say, I want screenshots of some examples. Some people don't want that. What do you need? What can you do for Monday morning for you to start the day and the week off completely different? You have a new routine, a new schedule. You're in a new headspace, literally right in front of you. You've got those questions, right? You've got those questions listed out. You know how to determine the market condition. You've got the rules right underneath that. You feel very prepared. Do you think that will help you? Do, do you think that will change anything for you and help you stay on track throughout the day? Okay. Was this enlightening to anyone? Caesar says, thanks. This webinar is more valuable than the others. Thank you so much. Caesar, good. That's, that's what I want to hear. Okay, is I can teach you, oh, this trade and this trade and this trade. But if you don't know how to put it to use, if you don't know how to stay focused, you know what I mean? Day to day and use it, it's not really useful for you, is it? And I want to know that these things are useful. So does that make sense of why this would be a very important assignment for you over the weekend? Not just, oh, John gave us the damn assignment, so better do it to say we did it. No, I want you to be excited about this assignment. I want you to be like trying to get off this webinar right now to go, damn it, I need to go and redo my routine. I need to look at my schedule. I need to figure this out. And then I want to dig in this weekend and I want to make those questions. I want to make a list of rules. I want to make that binder right in front of me where all I got to say to myself, is it trending? Yes. Cool. Flip the page. Trending rules. Got it. Obstruction. Got it. I know what to do. I know clearly what to do. Like you should be so excited about spending this weekend putting that little thing together in front of you because that is what can just clarify everything for you and keep you on track all day that you're trading every day. Like, like do you see that? Okay. So please spend some time this weekend doing that. 
um, I'm gonna get the webinar links out for you um, well actually they're already there the webinar links are already here if you go to the sniper page they're already here for next week uh, under number two I'll get this recording up here just as soon as I can here in a little bit I'll get it um, put down here under the tutorials uh, and I'll also get it you know emailed out put on Facebook text it out and everything so guys I hope this is very enlightening and eye-opening for you I've asked you this before We've got hundreds of other people that are on trials right now that were not on this webinar. Please, please do me a favor. Some of y'all have done really good at this. Some of you haven't. As soon as we get off here in a minute, how many of you are in a Skype room? Like one of the Skype groups we're on. If you're in a Skype room, please hop in that Skype room. Say something about the, this webinar. Say something about these tutorials or how this opened your eyes or a whole new light or wow you know light bulbs going off I needed and encourage other people to get on here too please hop in the elite room and do the same thing if you're on Facebook on our groups or a page please blow the whole thing up talk you know say some good things about this or how it helped you or tell let people know they absolutely have to do this they have to watch these okay because I can tell people they need to watch them that's one thing but when they hear it from you, so whether you're in one of our Skype rooms or whether you're in one of the Elite rooms or the Facebook page, please right now hop right in there. Say something about how great this was, how what it did for you, and how you would encourage anyone else on a trial to watch these videos, guys. So spend the weekend. Um, some people are like, hey, how do I get in a Skype room? Well, you know, if you're... If you were part of one of our live events or one of our mastery courses, we have Skype rooms for those. That's what I'm talking about there, okay? So, guys, please do that. Check those out. Um, some of you are asking, yes, some of you are asking about the special that Daryl had put together. Any of those specials, if you go up here, they're right here under sign up for any plan. Okay, he put all those specials there. So, guys, thank you. Have a great weekend put this to use, jump in and put all this together. And please, right now, right now, right now, Elite Room, Facebook, Skype Rooms, blow it up about your experience here and how everybody needs to be on them. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate all your kind words and your great interaction. We will see you next week. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.